Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see how to create a Postgres database on Amazon RDS and then how to connect to that database from our local uh, using any of the database uh, clients. So, okay, I'm going to use DB Weaver to uh, connect to that Postgres database on RDS from my local laptop. Okay, so the first step is uh, let's try to create a database on Amazon RDS. So for that, I'm already in my Amazon RDS console. I'm just going to click on create database here. And so this uh, takes you to this page where you need to fill a few details to create the database. Okay, I'm going to select uh, standard create. And then these are the data type, I mean database engine types, uh, options that the RDS offers. So we are going to create a Postgres database here. Okay, I'm going to select Postgres. And then these are the engine versions. I'm just going to select the latest version and there's the templates, okay, whether it is a production database or dev or test database. I'm just going to select a free tier data, like I mean option because uh, this is just for some demo purposes and uh, sample testing. So this should be fine for us, okay. So I'm just going to select free tier and as soon as you select free tier, uh, these options get disabled by default because the free tier instances are not eligible for multi availability zone clusters and uh, couple of things like that okay so which should be fine I mean we don't care about all those things uh, in this case okay so moving on uh, this is your database instance identifier like I mean this is the name of your instance you can call it whatever you want I'm just going to call it my test database and then here is your like credential settings so this is your master username which will be used to log into the database instance okay so you can also auto generate a password or you can select i mean set the password yourself manually so we are going to set the password ourselves okay i'm just going to give some password here and make sure that you make a note of this password just enter the same password here as well okay so just make sure you remember this master username and password so this will be used to log into that uh, database at a later point okay and uh, this is the db instance class so since we have selected uh, you know free tire instance so uh, i mean a couple of options are eliminated for us so this should be fine i mean this is a micro instance and uh, that should be fine for us okay and these are the storage uh, settings so you can select like i mean the what is the type of storage that you want uh, if you want like i mean uh, high like i mean uh, input output performance you can select this provision diops but i think this uh like i mean are charged so i mean the for our use case it should be fine okay and uh, you can disable this auto i mean uh, auto scaling for storage as well okay so that's it about the storage and then uh, coming to the connectivity so we don't want to attach any uh, ec2 compute so uh, i mean resources and the network type we'll keep it as uh, ipv4 and vpc we are going to uh, create this in our deep default vpc so if you want to create it like i mean you can select any vpc that you want to create this instance in okay i'm just going to create it in my default vpc and uh, then there is a subnet group okay here also if you want to put it in a certain uh, subnet group you can select that certain group group i am just going to leave it as default and uh, next one is a public access so this is a bit important one because we will be trying to access this database from outside of our vpc so that is when we will have that is why we will have to enable this public access okay so if you are like i mean if you don't need I uh, don't have a need to connect to your database from outside your VPC. You can just leave it as empty. So when you, I mean, uh, you can select no. When you select no, no one from outside your VPC can connect to your database. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to select yes because I'm going to try and connect to this database from outside my VPC. Okay. So make sure you select whichever is appropriate for you. And then like, I mean, if you want to collect from your local uh, laptop, which is not in your VPC, right? So you need to select yes here. And then the VPC say security fire group. Okay. So if you have a certain, like, I mean, security groups, which have all the rules defined, like, I mean, you can just select that or you can create a new VPC, VPC security group as well. This actually plays a bit important role. Uh, I'll show you in the later part of this video why this is important okay so for now i'm just going to uh, select my default security group okay and all those things i'm just going to leave it as empty i mean default and then database authentication how you are going to log in into your database so i'm just going to select password authentication and monitoring turn on performance insights i don't need this i'm just disabling all those things okay so all these things i'm just going to leave it as uh, default and then click on create database okay so yep 
I think it it takes a couple of minutes to create the database. So if you see here, uh, it doesn't creating state. So let's wait for the database to get created, and then once it is created, we will try and connect to that database from our local DB viewer. So uh, now our database is created. It's a successfully created database, and uh, the status is available. <clears throat> now let's try uh, let's let's try and connect uh, to the database from our DB viewer. Okay, so I'm just going to click on the database and uh, these are the details of the database. Okay, so to connect to the database, we need this endpoint. So I'm just going to copy this endpoint and open my DB viewer. Okay, so in my DB viewer, I'm just going to click on new database connection and select Postgres SQL here, then click on next. And in the host, I'm just going to paste the link that I just copied and the database, I'm just going to leave it Postgres. The username is Postgres and the password is basically whatever you had given while you are creating the database. Okay, so that is a password and I'm just going to click on test connection here. Okay, so let's see if it is able to connect to the database. Okay, so if you see we are getting an error saying that connection attempt timed out. Okay, so this is very uh, common uh, error and let's see how to fix this and uh, connect to the database okay so for that let's go back to our AWS console and so the database that you created here click on this in the security click on VPST security groups okay so this is the security group in which I had deployed my uh, instance in, like attached thing <clears throat> so inside the security group there is something called as inbound rules okay so inbound rules is basically uh, your like i mean definition of what traffic you can i mean you are allowing inside this okay so in the inbound rules if you see it is only allowing the traffic from the, sec the security group itself okay so what we need to do is we need to click on this edit inbound rules and allow the traffic to come from our like i mean local okay so for that click on uh, add rule here and uh, like you can just say all tcp so or you can like i mean if you want to just allow from one of the port you can just give like i mean since this uh post on port 5432 you can just give that uh, port here okay and here in the source you can like i mean so this is very important okay so if you want to allow the traffic from any ipv4 address you can just select any ipv4 and basically so anyone from the internet like i mean who has your database uh endpoint and username and password can connect to your database okay this is of course like i mean not very secure because you are allowing everyone like i mean to connect to your database so if you want to just allow from a certain ips right like i mean custom you can just select custom and then give your like i mean give the uh, ip ranges here whatever like i mean uh, cid or block you can just give that custom ips here okay or if you just want to uh, allow from a particular ip like your ip you can just select this one okay so for now i'm just going to select anywhere but uh, like i like i said this is not recommended because anyone with your uh, database endpoint and username and password will be able to connect to your uh, database okay and even if you're doing this it's always suggested that you create a separate uh, security group and then attach that security group to your uh, database uh, because if there are any other uh, instances that are using the security group then they will also be exposed to like i mean uh, all these ips that you are allowing here okay so yeah with that disclaimer so let's just give for this use case i'm just going to give anywhere ipv4 uh, so what i'm essentially saying here is that allow the tcp connections on this port from anywhere in the internet to the security group okay so yeah of course it's a, again it's a saying the same uh, disclaimer here, here as well because you are allowing all the ip addresses so yep i'm just going to click on save rules here and yep so that rule is saved now so now let's go back to the db viewer and click okay and then try this connection again so i'm just going to click on test connection and wait for it to get connected okay so if you see now that uh, i mean our connection is successful and we are now connected to that database okay so let me do finish so if you see here now you are able to see like i mean 
all the databases that are there here so this is of course the default database that was created so you can like i mean run your queries you like do whatever you want to do here with this database so that was a short demo on showing you how to create a postgres database and uh, establish connection to your database from your local laptop okay i hope you found the video helpful and i'll see you in the next video thank you